think that actually became illegal in competitions. Her chin had like an indent from one of my brace brackets. I didn't even like the guy. So I don't really understand why she was so mad and hated me so much. Hi, I'm Spencer. Um, I was a cheerleader for about three years in high school. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I've been cheerleading for 10 years in Rhode Island, at the University of Rhode Island, and my high school. Hi, my name's Laura, and I was a cheerleader for three years in high school. When I was cheerleading in high school, we had one practice where we were practicing for a competition. We were practicing a really hard pyramid, which is multiple stunts kind of working together to do one thing. My coach liked to try things that was like a little bit more difficult because then we would get more points. My best friend MT was in the middle. She was a really, really good flyer. So she's the one who, you know, gets like thrown up in the air, is on the top of the stunts. And I remember there were two flyers on either side holding on to MT. There was a part where we had to like swing her. And when she went to swing, I can't remember if she kicked my friend Courtney in their face or if her hip hit her in the face, but we practiced the pyramid. We went all the way through it. Everyone went to their spaces after the pyramid to continue the routine. And Courtney kind of just like went to the side or went to the front, didn't really make any noise. I think I heard like one whimper, but I didn't really think anything of it because cheerleading hurts. <laughs> all of a sudden, everyone was kind of looking at Courtney. When the flyers had swung MT, she hit Courtney in the mouth, but Courtney's teeth went from being like this to like this. They were still there, they were fine. She went to the dentist. They got put back into place with braces and it was only temporary, but like that was the scariest thing because I think that was the most hurt anyone had ever gotten up until that point. None of us knew what to do. And even my coach was kind of like, uh. I didn't know teeth could move from here to here without like being knocked out. That was stressful. Yeah, it was really bad. So when I was cheerleading in high school, I had this friend, she was like my best friend. Well, she liked a boy, the boy liked me, and she was mad. She thought that maybe she could change his mind. Her idea of doing that was to get a perm and to darken her hair, because she had light brown hair. In her head, she thought, oh, I'll just try to look more like Vanessa. It didn't work. <laughs> he didn't like her still. She was on my cheerleading team, she was my base. And one day we were practicing and I fell and I broke my wrist. It hurt so bad. I was out for the whole year. And at first I was like upset, but at the same time I was like, ah, oh, this happens, this is part of cheerleading. But when I found out that it might've been deliberate, that was a whole different story. She was bragging about it, telling everyone about it. I dropped Vanessa on purpose, cause she's a I didn't even like the guy. So I told her, I don't like him, he's all yours. So I don't really understand why she was so mad and hated me so much. So I approached her about it and she said, no way. But I didn't trust her after that. And to this day, I don't really know if it was intentional or not. So my first year cheerleading was my sophomore year in high school. And we were at cheer camp, which happens the summer before where you're kind of learning all the new things for the school year. We were doing a some sort of team building exercise at these camps. They always do like icebreakers. So the company that was running our cheer camp is called the UCA and the UCA cheerleader that was with our group said, I need a volunteer. So I raised my hand thinking, you know, we're gonna do something fun, who knows. And she tells me that I'm going to have to put on all the socks of all of my teammates on my hands and then continue to layer every Every single girl's socks on top like mittens and perform some sort of relay. It was hot. We were in a hot gym. Everyone has been working out, has been stunting. So all the socks were sweaty. It was so gross, smelled terrible. Luckily, they let me wash my hands after, but it was pretty traumatizing and I Honestly, don't know why I agreed to do that. We had practice like we always did. I think this time we were kind of just practicing stunts to see what would work. We were trying out new flyers. So there was a new girl who was gonna be on the top of the stunt. And I think we were practicing how they would come down from the stunt. There's a single, you throw them up and they spin once and then they come back down. Or there's a double where you throw them up and they're supposed to like rapidly spin twice and then come back down. I think that actually became illegal in competitions later on because people were getting hurt. I think we were practicing a double with this new flyer. It's important to note that before practice, I told my friend Michaela that she had a perfect nose. They threw this new flyer up, she went to spin, and she came down just fine, but when she came down, she threw her head back. And my friend Michaela was the back spot for that stunt. The flyer came down, slammed my friend Michaela in the nose. All we saw was Michaela go like this and like very calmly like walk out 
of wherever we were practicing and like to the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, she broke her nose. <laughs> There was so much blood. She was very calm for the amount of blood. Like she was eerily calm, but I think she like didn't know what else to do. For like, I wanna say a week or so after that, she got a nosebleed like every other day. She blames me to this day because I told her she had a perfect nose. I was in college and we performed every halftime at the basketball game. And I was always in the front because I was a gymnast and a dancer. And we had this new routine. I did a lot of choreography for it. There was actually a guy there that I really liked and I was so psyched. We're in the middle of our routine and there was a group of girls right in the front. I knew them, they were on the hip hop team. And they were like, it looked like they were whispering about me, but I just tried not to care because I was doing my thing. My crush is here, so I'm like, I'm just gonna keep dancing. Turns out I turned around, squat down for the next part of the dance, and I noticed that my boob was out the whole time. I have no boobs, that's why I didn't feel it. I just thought everybody was watching my awesome dance moves, but yeah, that wasn't the case at all. I was just flashing everyone. That was at the beginning of my college career, and for years, people were talking about that. So we were learning how to stunt, and we were in an elevator, a half extension, where two girls are standing face to face as the bases and they're holding the flyer's feet at about neck level. So we were learning how to come down from that in a cradle, which is where you throw the flyer up and then both of the bases catch in the arms. So when this is done correctly, you are fairly close together, throw the girl up, catch, she comes down. But if you're new and kind of scared like we were, we were too far apart when we threw her and so when her body weight came down, it brought both of us forward and we kind of had like a kiss of death. And my teeth, which I had braces at the time and her chin collided, we hit and then it was like, everyone like kind of backs up because everyone saw it happen. And so I'm covering my mouth because like it really hurt. And she's covering like her mouth area. The cheerleader, captain, coach person was like, okay, let me see and I like, moved my hand and there, my teeth were all bloody and then her chin had like an indent from one of my brace brackets. For probably a few days after that, we were afraid to do that stunt. I think that Bass and I were not a good pair, so we did not stunt together again.